It's time to bring in our good friend, Ruth Epstein. Uh, she covers our area on a daily basis from the Republican American. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning, Marshall. How are you this morning? Good, and I want to start off saying something about Lisa Carter. I have. We are now going to feature Lisa Carter with a, a Region 1 superintendent report at least once a month, hmm. uh, uh, year-round. And I, I want people to know that in the past two and a half weeks, I have spoken with Lisa, Lisa Carter off and on about various things that I've never been able to do with a superintendent for the past three and a half years. Really? She's really been very open with me, uh, willing to, to tell me what she can tell me and tell me what she can't tell me and not string me along. It has been so far just an amazing, amazing difference. So. Well, good. Well, I'm glad open communication is key. Yeah. So yeah. That is wonderful. Yeah. And speaking of that, you know, they are having this reopening team meetings and and people giving given tasks to figure out, or hopefully figure out, what to do if and when school opens. They're um, doing, and they're doing a lot of these meetings. Yeah, yeah, and I, I uh, give them a lot of credit. I, it's, it's very, very difficult. It, it, they're dealing in such uncertainty. I wouldn't want to be part of this now. No, well, they're having these meetings so they can put together some sort of plan, which the state wants, and then the state mm -hmm. will look at that plan. This is how horrible it is for the administrators and then the state will send back to them what they recommend it's uh and it's going to be very interesting to see how it all works yeah yeah and it's a huge team of people uh, have come forward it's really uh amazing from uh school board people to community members to teachers to faculty to um custodial staffs it's uh, everybody's input very important but the whole country is dealing with this horrible dilemma it's incredible you know and it's interesting we we now sit here uh, in a, in our tri-state region with one of the lowest rates in the nation uh, and now we have to be wary about letting people in from other states because we have uh, met the curve and defeated it uh, mm -hmm. which and it was done so just by social distancing and just masks following the rules yeah, following i the mean rules. it's just yeah. i i am just blown away by the states where it's surging and people just refusing to, to take responsibility and do what they have to do. Uh, it just, yeah, it works if you follow the rules and do what you're told. Um, it's not political. It's not divisional. It's just the look at the, look at the map, look at the facts, and see the places that are, that are following the rules. <laughs> They're not out of control. It's just it's, it's pretty it couldn't simple. Be any simpler. Yeah. So, uh, and the other big issue, of course, is Great Falls. Oh. Um, I've been there a couple of times this week. I was there yesterday. Um, as you may have seen, I snapped a picture of Henry Todd for Selectman of Falls Village talking with the trooper. Uh, the poor trooper had never been here before. He was sent out on patrol and um, was trying to figure out what was going on. Um, the place was packed again. Uh, well, the um, lower parking lot across from the fire powerhouse was uh, packed, and people were just, you know, they were looking for a place to find some relief from the heat and not realizing, um, well, not that area so much as the one up above and how dangerous it is. But the whole thing is, is that when I try to tell people, once again, I've had people uh, send me uh, send me messages saying. Uh, you're anti-American. Uh, we're right. We have the right to go to these places. Their parks and everything, and and all I can say to them is, first of all, nobody, nobody has the right to hang out in the middle of Great Falls, the falls itself. Right. It's dangerous, and just for that reason alone, it's dangerous. Um, but what I, what we found out during this whole progression is that there's a mixture of, and I didn't realize this. I did realize first light. Uh, also, the state of Connecticut, what's the DEC, uh, whatever that is, um, they have uh, rights there, uh, first light. Um, but also, the trails that go through there mm -hmm. are part of the Appalachian Trail system. Yeah. yeah. And, and what people were saying, well, that the trail is now open. No, the northern part of the trail is open. If you look at their map, Connecticut, New York, and Massachusetts are all bright red because those states don't want people coming in from other states and possibly bringing the virus. Uh -huh. So so mm -hmm. First Light doesn't want you on that property. Uh, the the, the uh, uh, tr Appalachian Trail doesn't want you on that property. Mm. Uh, you know, it's, I, I tell people it's like you have a stream in your backyard. 
uh, it's on your property. People come and set up a tent and go in the stream. You're going to let them do that? Yeah. No. Yeah. I, and, you know, and also, sooner or later, uh, because we know the Housatonic River, Ruth, someone's going to someone's going to drown, and then who's going to be sued? Who's going to be sued? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I was talking to several people stopped me to say, what's going on here? You know, why can't we swim? And I explained. It's very dangerous. We had an incident last week. Um, uh, they just... A lot of people just didn't understand, and uh, it's just a. It was a mess. Yeah, I mean, there the police didn't know how to handle it. The people who were coming there didn't know what was going on, and you then know, you know what happens, uh, Ruth. If if north of us there's a big thunderstorm that lingers over Great Barrington, we say for twenty five thirty minutes and dumps an well, inch of rain. That's where the problem is. What happens coming with, north, with, coming with, down south from with people the sitting, north. sitting yep. on the Great Falls? And that interrain all of a sudden comes over the falls, and you got a big problem. Catches people unaware, and you're absolutely right. Yeah, no, this is it's public safety, and and again, as we said last week, putting our first responders in harm's way. I mean, that's another issue. There's so many issues here. Oh, there's a trash. Well, yeah. People there are all day long. Where do they go to the bathroom, folks? Where do they go? To, there's no bathroom within sight there. Where yeah. do they go to the bathroom? The trash, um, it's uh, it just it, and the parking. The road is as narrow as it is. Right, and and as yeah, they pointed out, if and they were parking on both sides yeah. Yeah, last week. It made it totally impossible for the responders to get there. Um, yeah. Oh well. Uh, it's too bad, and then it gets, as you said, you're dealing with people who are, you know. It's our right to be there. Well, no, it isn't. (laughs) It's your right to be there when it's open. And when it's open, it's not your right to sit out in the middle of the falls and endanger yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's too bad you're getting all this. Not a lot, but there's, it's just, I mean, 10 to 1, people people know that it's not safe what's going on the falls. Yeah. 10 to 1. Yeah. But, Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, anyway, we had... um, Several meetings last week, including the, uh, as we said, the reopening of school team meeting, uh, coming up with ideas for how to handle the school when it does, if and when it opens. Uh, Cornwall selectmen met. Uh, they are talk. They talking about their whether they've um, come up with their goals. It's halfway through the year, and they discussed all their goals and what they want to do going forward. Um, a lot has to do with housing. Uh, Big issue in all these towns, and uh, of course the wastewater facility that they're trying to put into West Cornwall. Uh, Canaan um, will be having a uh, COVID testing this week on Wednesday. Uh, I guess it's past the registration date. But... I tell I tell people to call and see if there's slots, anyways, because yeah, you, you never can tell. There, there might only be like 25 people registered, and, and you can register. Good idea, because. Um, it's better to be safe. If they say no, they say no. I mean, yeah, that's all. Yeah. That's all you can do. Um, the uh, Falls Village Board of Finance Board yep. of Selectmen are tonight. The Sharon Board of Selectmen is tomorrow at three o'clock. Sharon has a town meeting and uh, Thursday at six thirty. I think pretty much routine. And that that agenda is on the Sharon Connecticut website. So. Yes. Yeah. And so are all these meetings and uh, all the. Uh, links to Zoom. Um, all you have to do is go on to each town's website, go on to Agenda. I mean, it can be a little bit daunting if you don't know how. Um, and the um, Zoom links are all listed on those agendas. So um, now, now, We also have a planning and zoning meeting tonight in North Canaan at 7 uh, o'clock, and they will let people in. They're limiting 10 people. Yeah, I think they did that last month as well. Yeah. Um, and um, there's some again, as I've said before, there have been some wonderful talks from the libraries. Uh, Hotchkiss Library, because it couldn't hold its uh, yeah. book signers group uh, book signing event, which you and I usually uh, mingle at. Um, they are doing it through Zoom and having wonderful uh, authors speak uh, just on a variety of topics and great stuff. And uh, if again, go to the Hotchkiss um, site and library site and see if you can find the links and listen in. It's it's just amazing what we get up here. Yeah, and Women Support Services, by the way, if you ever wanted to volunteer, they're looking for volunteers this month and next month uh, to be uh, a tra- in training 
uh, to, to help with phone calls. Uh, they're uh, 24 the hour. Yeah. And all you have to do is email uh, Deanna Barry, who's a volunteer coordinator at dbarry at wssdv.org, and they are um, they are looking for for more volunteers. Uh, I understand this time, you know, domestic violence is on a rise because yeah. people are stuck in their houses and too much togetherness and uh, unfortunately brings on that sort of thing, which is too bad. Uh, the the Tri-State Chamber, the Salisbury Bank, and Lime Rock Park teamed up on Friday and had a food drive to help um, Corner Pantry, which I understand has doubled its need yeah. and uh, really needs a lot of help. And uh, uh, people were very generous while I was there. It was uh, wonderful to see people coming out and, and donating, and hopefully that will help. Um, so, uh, And as we say, lots of good things happening, people coming out to help everybody. Yeah. And I want to remind people that, once again, the milling is probably done on Route 7 uh, in Sharon, uh, Salisbury, and Canaan. There's about a six, uh, yeah. six and a half mile stretch. But the paving now starts tomorrow, and so there's going to be delays on that stretch of road. Ah, okay. It was a rather bumpy ride the other day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was bumpy beforehand, but they had a mill to do it do it correctly, and now they go out. You know, I was once told that when they, when they mill and they actually do some of these roads, it's about a million dollars a mile. Really? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm not, actually, I'm not surprised. Yeah. In, <laughs> today's, so expensive today, in today's nowadays. money, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, All right. Uh, um, so, you know, Marshall, even though we're still uh, doing everything virtually pretty much, uh, there's lots going on, and um, no reason you can't uh, get out there and, and listen. Uh, and in some cases, um, they did have the Sharon neighbor-to-neighbor thing last night. So uh, people were out, I assume, watching that. Um, and and uh, on Wednesday, the Sharon concerts restart down restart. in the valley. Yes. And Kent yes. has their concerts on Thursdays. Uh, actually, Kent's have been postponed. Um, yeah. They've had some problems. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. So uh, check those. To, before you go to a Kent concert, check it out and make sure it's still on. Some of them have been postponed. Uh, but Sharon does start up this, weekend, this week. And uh, um, so... We'll be out there and trying to follow everything that's going on. All right, Ruth, have a good week, a safe week, uh, and uh, we'll speak to you next week. Very good, Marshall. You too. Take Take care. care. Bye-bye. Ruth Epstein from the Republican American here on Robin Hood Radio.